What's happening, sports fans? We got another great top recruit to talk to right now. This guy just decided real recently where he's going to be playing in college. It's Anthony Pat from San Marcos. He's going to be playing at the hat. You can see, tip the hat down, tip the hat down. Yeah, there we go. He's going to be a wild. He's going to bear down as he tips his hat down to be an Arizona Wildcat. Congratulations, my man. Uh, what, what was that decision like for you? Um, it, it was really crazy. So last year I wasn't even getting looked at by any D1 schools or anything like that. And just grinded throughout the whole year, started getting offers, got my uh, top offer from Lehigh, went up there on an official visit in, uh, I think it was January. And I was really thinking about them, thinking about committing there. And then I was just, just had a feeling something was coming. So kind of waited out and see how that went. And then in February, Coach Devon, the O-line coach at uh, Arizona, reached out to me and he said, we love you. Coaching staff loves you. Coach Mazzone, the offensive coordinator, loves you. And we'd like to get you here out on an official visit and give you that full scholarship. And that's how it was since. So I mean, the really- emotions in that moment got to be pretty surreal. Like, what, what, what was the celebration, the night like following that phone call? Uh, well, that was, it wasn't during the quarantine yet, but it was kind of like me and my family. It's still like, it still really hasn't hit me yet. Cause I haven't been able to get out there cause of the quarantine and everything. But when I it felt like everything finally paid off and all the hard work I've been putting in just paid off. So I mean, really yeah, cool. you had to, unfortunately, uh, I, I love the enthusiasm of throwing your signing day celebration in the front yard. And we'll bring that up uh, from your Instagram on the, the screen here for everybody. Certainly anticlimactic in terms of you're not there with all of the fanfare, but nonetheless, I'm sure have, that's a moment that you had to have been thinking about since like middle school, child, like forever. So what was that like, man? Yeah, I had like 40, 50 people wanting to come and do like the social distancing guidelines. We could only have 10. So it was really more like who's the closest people who's been supporting me for a long time. And that was my grandparents, my mom, my dad, my sisters. So. We got all like the super close family together. It was it was definitely unique and different, but it was definitely fun. Well, see, here's how you spin it. You uh, you just keep doing small groups, and <laughs> and you can keep re-signing and keep re-signing and keep re-signing, and we'll just we'll we'll throw like a whole signing month for all of you guys that are uh, having to make these decisions right now. So, you know, you you mentioned being really kind of you felt like you were Lehigh was going to be your school, but then there was something else, and then you waited and you were really patient. Mm-hmm. Would that be your main advice to younger kids out there is just be patient or what guidance would you give to people like yourself, you know, uh, just a couple of years ago? Um, I think the number one thing that was for me, was that my uh, coach that I'm really close with uh, train every day, my dad that I was with every day, there was the key word was always just having faith, just have faith in yourself, have faith in the process. You're working hard. Everything's going to fall in place. Just give it time. Okay. So what position does the university of Arizona want you for? Uh, well, the way coach Devon said it, I, he wants me to play tackle because of my athleticism, but the way they do it is they have you start from the inside and work yourself out. So I'm assuming when I get there, I'll play a lot of guard and then still get reps at a tackle. Okay. So maybe with tackle in mind as the ultimate position through which I asked this question, what feels better run blocking or pass blocking? Oh, for me, it's always been physical, so run blocking. Pass blocking was a little weird because every position I've ever played, like giving up ground was never like the option, like linebacker, D-line. It was always straightforward, get the running back, get the quarterback, stop them there. For O-line being like three steps and having to drop four yards and hold your ground, it was definitely different. Well, I asked because the Arizona Wildcats tend to run a, a pretty pass heavy yeah. fanciful offense. And yeah. it, it can be, a, it can your experience for four years of playing at, at Navy or four years of playing at, you know, somewhere in the pac 12 can be vastly yeah. different as a lineman. So you're going to have maybe a little adjustment there to, to pass block. And it sounds like, well, they just, uh, their uh, number one uh, running back, JJ Taylor, he's going in the draft this year. So, when he was there, they're getting uh, pretty run heavy. And then for this year, for the freshman class, they just got another really good uh, running back. I think his name's Frank Brown, and he was a four-star recruit. I've been watching his film, and he's a really good running back. So I'm looking forward to getting a run block with him. But with the offense part, Coach Mazzone, he said they're going to be doing a lot of pass, but it will still be a lot of fun. So are you walking around the house just kind of like, 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 you know, sort of lower kind of the footwork, like blocking people like that? Like, how are you? How are you doing sort of your own little spring ball at home right now? Um, so I know a lady with a in, indoor gym, so I've been kind of quarantined with her and my family and my coach. So we go over there probably three, four times a week and able to work out over there and, uh, 
get it in and then or we'll go to a park or something do some feet work or we'll find a set of hills and go run hills because i try to my coach's philosophy is we want to stay as athletic as we are and let the get the weight gain over time since i'm gonna have that full red shirt year so i just ran a four eight nine forty so oh there you go yeah, so I'm I'm trying to stay as quick as possible and as athletic as possible and as flexible as possible before I get there. What are some myths or misunderstandings or just what don't people know about the life of a lineman? Uh, I don't know. That'd be hard. And, I, and this, like, I mean, this doesn't have to be off the field. This can be on the field. I, mean, I just I the you most people look where the ball goes. Most people are you know they know everything about the running backs, the quarterbacks, but they don't know that you guys are all all your fingers are broken the whole game and all of your shoulders hurt and everyone's been kicked in the shin and like just like what is maybe something that you might just want to be like yeah this is something that we actually deal with put a little respect. I think the biggest thing for linemen is like even like the best linemen like the Paris Johnson where he's going to Ohio State like. The we're never in like the spotlight, I guess you could say. Like we're kind of like the guys that just get the job done, go home, and celebrate like peacefully and like quietly, compared to like the running backs and quarterbacks who are like on the news all the time celebrating. Which I've always been a quieter, more kind of shy guy, so it, it really hasn't bothered me. Transition. Well, then I, I appreciate you being willing to even come on with us. Uh, I, I know that a lot of people might want to be like, yeah. Um, Playing at San Marcos is a pretty crazy home experience. The, yeah. the the blue crew is something that no matter what the sport is, we love to talk to them. Your take on playing in front of them? Um, it was definitely it definitely gets the nerves going because you're. I feel like the first thing for me that kind of got the nerves not not as bad for me is uh, I it was the first time I ever wore knee braces and I was running to the sideline right in front of the whole student section, and they clipped together and I fell straight on my face and. Nobody even realized or saw me, so it kind of was like, they don't care as long as we're winning the game, keeping the fans happy. It's cool. Favorite road game to play in San Diego? Favorite stadium to play at? I love our stadium because I think it's probably the biggest. Yeah, that's always part. the default answer. So, so that's why I, I always ask road games. Favorite road? road. Game, probably Mission Hills because every year it's packed. That rivalry is the real deal. Packed game. I've never been to a game or a high school game like it. It's just always, the atmosphere is just insane. And it's kind of the same for all of the sports across the board. You guys are, are, are good at attending and showing up to all the rivalries for all the sports. I think we just won the the fan of the year thing. Battle of the fans for like the yeah. like third or fourth time. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah our uh, our uh, student union and uh, student, student uh, body is really good at getting everybody out to the games and having a good time. When I've always kind of felt and argued that it's a cyclical thing, like sports are more enjoyable when you have that crowd there, and we're finding that out in oh, yeah. in infinite amounts right now that you know people are saying that even if sports comes back, it's not going to be the same without the crowd. But in the high school ecosystem, I've always been like, I don't understand why it's only come to our games or don't go to these games. If you go to our game, we'll go to your game. If you go, I, so I applaud everybody at San Marcos always for uh, for doing that super super well. Um, yeah. What have you been up to in your downtime other than uh, than 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 other than working out and going to school? Have you picked up a new talent? Have you learned something new about yourself, or are you just going crazy? I think the one thing I found out myself, like I, I've never liked puzzles, but we've been doing a ton of puzzles. Like my mom, she loves puzzles. My grandma, my aunt, they love puzzles. So like, I find myself doing puzzles now. I've been playing a lot of video games at home. Or- the new thing you are not the first person to say puzzles do you have any of them uh really nearby that really quick that you can just kind of pan over with at my grandma's house we always go over there and put them together deal the next one you get done take a photo of uh, of it and, and set it in we'll put it up on our instagram story because yeah they're tricky man but then you actually kind of get in that groove and you're like okay wait we got a whole corner over here i mean are we talking 500 pieces where where are you falling on the puzzle difficulty I think the most we've done is two thousand, but I think oh, most, what? But I think the one that we worked on, we're working on right now, is like a thousand pieces. That's a that's a I feel like two thousand piece puzzles are are that's respectable. Took probably two weeks a week. It okay. Was a long- so so what what requires more mental energy? Breaking down a good three four defense and and analyzing a passing scheme or organizing a two thousand piece puzzle. Oh, organizing two thousand piece puzzle for sure. You'll take any blitz package any day over trying to put together a two thousand piece puzzle. I mean, I was a quarterback for two three years, so learning learning how to do all these different things, 
learning the offense and defense, that wasn't a hard part for me. It was just more getting the O-line technique down. And trying to sort edge pieces is something that nobody ever wants to go through a second time after they get that first one of them done. Um, yeah. Hey, we're like like you said. You're learning new. We're all learning new things about ourselves in these crazy times. It's been a thirty something days now of, of all this. So, yeah, it's it, crazy. what's the experience been like, though? I mean, yeah, yeah, sports, but also just as you know, now that prom and graduation and just kind of everything is so up in the air or canceled or crazy for a high school senior. What is the emotions? The experience? Just what has this all been like? Um, the mo. I'm just more. I'm more focused on going to Arizona because I, I haven't been out there. So the whole thing, every thought in my head has been towards Arizona. Like the prom, they officially canceled that, I think, last week or this week. But the graduation is still up in the air. And I've never been a guy to, like, go to go to dances or go to graduations or anything. So I feel I definitely feel bad for the students in the student body sections that are working on prom, working on graduation every year, have been looking forward to this since they're freshmen. So I definitely feel for them. But for me personally, I, it's, uh, I'm just ready for the new beginning and getting out to college. Ready to bear down next year, take that red shirt year, and then represent San Diego really, really well, hopefully uh, the, the seasons after that. Thank you so much for being on with us, Anthony. I really appreciate you sharing a little bit of your time. Folks, there's a ton of sports athletes, stars, and every level in between here in San Diego that are going to be going on to the next level and representing us really, really well. And Anthony is another one. And he and I both appreciate you sharing a little bit of time to get to know him so that you can uh, you can rep him and say you knew him when. Thank you so much for being on with us, and we'll, we'll talk to you yeah. soon. I appreciate you having me.